Welcome to the First United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here for this virtual worship service. Will you join me in the call to worship? Welcome this day to a celebration of hope and abundance. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Today we gather, often feeling pulled this way and that with demands on our lives, our time and our energy. Yet God brings us to this day and every day with new opportunities to learn and grow. God still loves us and seeks to heal us. Pour out your needs to the Lord who will always hear and respond. God is near to all of us. Amen. And now will you join me in the opening prayer? Redeeming God, Come and heal our lives this day. Open our hearts to receive your words of hope and joy that we may become faithful servants of yours in this world which you have loaned to us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which are prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
and supplications to the Lord. And finally, number seven, lift up. Be available to help those in need, serving, supporting, and sharing. Many have already set their goals of diet and exercise just to do a little more exercise and to eat more of the right foods or to read the Bible in its entirety for the new year. Now, according to research, about 60% of us will make New Year's resolution. But only 8% of us are successful in achieving them. These stats suggest that over 90% of us are going to fail to reach our goals. But we will not let this happen. Setting goals helps us to identify our priorities. It is an opportunity to take inventory, to identify how we will invest our time, our energy, money, and talents. How we will witness in the kingdom of God. Not just because it's a new year, but because every day of our lives is an opportunity to focus on the things of God. I want to focus on number six. Reach up. Spend time in prayer. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are called to be mindful that each new year reminds us that time is passing. And it's up to us to seize the moment and maximize the potential of every new day to serve our God. It's good and it's meaningful to read the Bible through each year. But it's also good to take a chapter or a few verses of scripture a day and ponder its meaning for us to ask God's guidance and understanding. Take the time to make room for God and allow God to order our steps. In our text today, that is exactly the lifestyle of Simeon, the lifestyle he modeled for us. His name means obedience, listening, he is described as a good man, a man who lived in prayerful expectancy that the help would come to Israel and that he would see it. Beginning in Luke 2, verse 25, we learn, And the Holy Spirit was on him. The Holy Spirit had promised him that he would see the Messiah before he died. Let by the Holy Spirit, he entered the temple. Now, according to the Mosaic law, a woman was required to offer two turtle doves or pigeons in a purification ceremony at the temple, 40 days after the birth of a son, and to present this child to the Lord. When Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple for his presentation, the prophet, an elderly prophet named Simeon, took the infant in his arms and offered a blessing and a prophecy. He knew this was the answer to his prayer, the one that he had waited for, the Messiah, the Son of God. Can you imagine what he felt in that moment? In his arms, the Messiah, the Lamb of God. In his arms, he looks into the eyes of salvation, the one made wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince.
footprints always. Jesus said in John 14, 27, I leave you peace. It is my own peace I give you. I give you peace in a different way than the world does. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. So in Thanksgiving, Simeon recited a prayer that has come to be called Nuke Dimitus, beginning with verse 29. And they often use this prayer at the end of services. These words he prayed. God, you can now release your servant. Release me in peace as you promised. With my own eyes, I have seen your salvation. It's now out in the open for everyone to see. A God revealing light to the non-Jewish nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory for your people Israel. Now the songwriter put it this way, thank you for the Lamb. Because of your grace, I can finish this race, the precious Lamb of God. It is now our turn. How do we face 2021 as Simeon has modeled for us in this text? It was not for him a New Year's resolution. It was a lifestyle to wait for the Messiah. Now, if you are like me, I need to understand how to wait on God. How, like Simeon, do we wait patiently, hopefully, on the manifestation of answered prayer? We know from God's own word that he is not a God of confusion, that he will make everything plain. And having said that, we find our answer to how to wait in Luke 2, 25. And the Holy Spirit was on him. The Holy Spirit had promised him that he would see the Messiah of God before he died. Led by the Holy Spirit, he entered the temple. Did you catch it? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Today, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. And in Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, we read these words. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. The most important decision that anyone can make is to be baptized. John 14, 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. Never lose the focus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The greatest decision of all that we can make is not only to be baptized, but to live out our baptism. It is an outward sign of what is going on in the inside of us. The heavens open up even for us today and the Spirit of God, which is tucked inside of us, deep down, will come up and blossom in us and set upon us like a dove. And with this power from God, we can do all things, even wait on the Lord. From our baptismal covenant, we read 
these words in your hymnal on page 40. We can accept the freedom and power God has given us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and put our whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. My brothers and sisters, Happy New Year. Every year, we make promises for new resolutions on the first day of January of each year. Many times we fall short before the end of January. Just a thought. There is nothing miraculous or powerful in the calendar on the first day of every new year. It's just another day to be thankful for life, health, strength, family, for God's blessings and more and more and more of the things that he has done for us. Our power to do the things pleasing to God are found within us through our baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Every day, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We can do all things the Christ who strengthens us. It is the Holy Spirit inside of us that leads and guides us and gives us the courage to face a new day even in the midst of COVID. It gives us victory. It is our Holy Spirit that flows down from heaven that empowers us to witness to the one true living God. Today, I invite you to renew your baptism. If you have your water with you, if you will just put it front and center as you hear these words. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos and swept across the deep waters, and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the floods, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. The children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all of the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by the Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nation, his glory among all people. For out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. I praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and with the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever.
we do not always do right. Yet, we are standing here holding in our arms, in our hearts, salvation right in the midst of our tears. The precious Lamb of God. I want you to take your hand, the same hand that you touched your forehead with and renewed your baptism. And I want you to give me, right before the screen, a thumbs up. And I want you to look at that thumb and realize that as it points, it's pointing up. It's reminding us to reach up, to spend time in prayer, to talk to God in the morning, in the midday, and at night, to make our confessions, thanksgiving, and supplications before the Lord. Now, in all things, in all that you do, in your living and in your doing, Behold the Lamb of God. Thumbs up, God. We love you. Amen.